Grace, how are you? Um, we just finished our classroom chat and I have elephant hair for those of you that were in the dress up like somebody today. <laughs> All right, we are on to chapter six. So do you remember they just screamed woolly mammoth and they're running and then they realize they're running in midair, which means they went off an edge and now they just crashed, okay? Chapter six. Oh, my aching head, moaned Sam's voice. Oh, groan voice. Gret groaned Fred's voice. We're alive, I said. Are you sure, said Sam. My head is pounding. I can't move. I can't breathe. And I can't see anything. I tried to move, but couldn't. Something was weighing me down. You can hear, can't you, I said. Yeah. Then we're not dead. But it sure smells like something died said Fred. I gave a sniff. It smelled like two or three things had died and taken off their old sneakers at the same time. Maybe we are dead, said Sam. Maybe this is what being dead is like, all dark and quiet and stinky. Fred and I thought about this for a few dark moments and smelly moments. It was not a comforting thought. What's that noise? said Fred. We strained to hear a faint murmuring sound. Sounds like human voices, I said. We listened again. It is human voices, said Sam. He screamed, help, help, we're not dead. Get us out of here. Uh, Sam, I said, yeah. What if they're not friendly people? Oh, right, I didn't think about that. Too late, said Fred's voice. Hey, they come. Oh, wait, oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Here they come, whoever they are. <gasps> we held our breath and listened to the noises get louder and closer. Now, it didn't sound so much like human voices. Now it sounded more like animal noises. Sounds like monkeys, said Sam. Maybe it's a band of wild apes. Maybe it's a bunch of hungry cave bears. Maybe it's, shh, I whispered. Maybe they'll just go away. But at that very second, the smelly thing covering us was pulled back. Cool air and faint light washed over us. We found ourselves face to face with a big, hairy ape. Ah! Sam, Fred, and I all screamed together. And the hairy ape jumped back. Without the heavy cover on us, we found we could sit up and move again, though not too swiftly. I still felt like I could step off a bad amusement park ride. Our eyes were adjusting to the light. I looked around and figured we must have been knocked out all night. We were sitting in a dirt pit covered with a low roof made with a bunch of logs piled on a fallen tree. There was one hole in the roof that must have been where we fallen through and another that looked like a small doorway near the ground. A whole group of hairy ape men with ragged animal skins tied around them. They looked at us like we were the monkeys in the zoo. Hey, they're cave guys, said Fred. The same guys were running from, hey, these were the same guys running from the fake dinosaur said Sam. I looked at the scruffy bunch of guys. The biggest one with the beard definitely looked familiar. He approached us cautious, cautiously, making noises that sound like, hoo, hoo. he held out a gnarly hand, black with dirt. I took it and shook it. Glad to meet you, Mr. Hoo. My name is Joe. Sorry that we dropped in on your pit or house here or something. <laughs> Dirty bits of animal hide and, hu and fur hung from sticks. Piles of dead leaves color covered the floor and the whole place smelled like a combination of old socks, bad cheese, a public bathroom. Hey, it kind of reminds me of your room, Fred. The bearded guy wiggled his hand and hooted again. The rest of his gang shuffled their feet in the dirt and hooted along. Hoot hoot to you too, I said. Oh, and these are my friends, Fred and Sam. The big guy pointed to Fred and Sam. Ugh, ugh. Oh, close enough, I said. <laughs> the big guy put his hand on his chest and said, duh. 
Yeah, no kidding, said Sam. Duh, the caveman repeated. I said, duh, okay, duh. Too bad you're, too bad about your name, but thanks for letting us use your uh, place or house. I looked around the pit again. It really was a pit. No chance these guys would have the book, said Fred. Buh, said duh. Yeah, a book, you know, a thing this big. Fred held out his two hands pressed together with pages. A magic book? Here's a picture of duh. Buh, buh. The leader duh motioned to one of the other men. He started digging under a pile of sticks and dirt in the back of the pit. I can't believe it, said Sam. These guys live in a hole in the ground and they have the book. Maybe they aren't as dumb as they look. The little guy found what he was looking for and brought it to Duh. You just never know with magic, I said. Duh took the animal skin wrap and handed it to me and smiled. Bug. So, Jam, duh. Joe, Sam, and I crowded around the package. Hello, magic book. Goodbye, Stone Ages, cheered Fred. I never thought I would be this happy to get back to do math homework. I unwrapped the skin as fast as I could and held up a completely rotten, maggot-covered piece of meat. Oh, gross, you guys. Dust smiled and nodded. Book! He took a bite, rubbed his stomach, and handed it to us. Book! Fred, Sam, and I gagged and started crawling for fresh air through the hole in the low roof. We hit the space between the two logs at the same time and we all tried to get out first. The cave guy grabbed us and pulled us back in. Duh pointed outside and shook his head. Ugh. He made a weird face with his teeth showing and his hands in front of him like claws. Ugh. Fred made a funny gurgling sound. Let me go or I'm going to ug all over you. Fred broke loose from the guy holding him and squeezed through the logs into the fresh air. Sam and I were just about to follow when we heard Fred scream, the loudest scream I've ever heard. Fred scream. That was the end of chapter six. Bye, guys.